A nerdy teen gets his once-in-a-lifetime chance to be with a gorgeous cheerleader. However, he needs to find his ticket to be with his dream girl safely, and this leads him to the most dangerous night of his life. Brad has always been in love with his classmate, Brooke. However, he can only be with her in his daydreams. Their teacher catches him distracted, so he calls on him to stand up. With Brad's interests obvious at the moment, he makes up an excuse not to do so. Lucky for him, the bell rings, and everyone packs up. Before they leave, the teacher offers going away gifts for his graduating students. The gifts are protection to prevent them from spreading their seed, and he orders the jock, Kyle, to take one. Kyle makes fun of this, so the teacher dismisses everyone. Some men empty out the jar of protection, and Brad takes an interest in the last piece, but ultimately drops it back, thinking that he won't get lucky anytime soon. As they leave school later, Brad insists to his friends, Leah, Seth, and Josh, that he and Brooke are meant to be. The others, however, aren't convinced since the woman doesn't even show any interest in him. Brad argues that he and Brooke have been sitting next to each other in class for years since their surnames are alphabetically close. He also believes that they look good together. And to prove this, he shows them Brooke's cheerleading photo, where he's in the bleacher in the background. This convinces his friends that he's obsessed, and Leah points out that his crush doesn't even know his name. As if to prove this, Brooke taps on Brad's shoulder but calls him Rod instead. Leah corrects her, and the woman brushes it off before asking Brad to help her pass her biology exams. Stunned, Brad immediately says yes, so Brooke writes her number on his palm and tells him to drop by her house to tutor her. After she leaves, Brad declares that this is finally his chance to be with Brooke. Four nights later, Brad's father, Ben, teaches him the importance of his first experience. However, he's only talking about his first time driving his luxury car. Afterward, the father and his wife, Bev, leave for their date night just as Leah arrives to check in on her friend. She finds him panicking about what to wear for his visit to Brooke, though he has not washed his hands since his crush wrote on it four days ago. Leah finds this disturbing, but she can't bring herself to let him humiliate himself. With this, Leah gets him to practice talking to his crush. Brad uses a romantic line he's planned out for Brooke, and Leah gets enticed by this. Because of this, she leans close to him, only to get disappointed when Brad breaks from the act, reminding her that his line was meant for his crush. Brad soon drives up to Brooke's house and nervously rings the doorbell. The beautiful woman answers the door, but Kyle is also there, insisting on going to a party instead of studying. Lucky for Brad, Brooke throws her boyfriend out and takes her guest to her room. They spend the night studying biology, though Brad is clearly more interested in Brooke's anatomy. Making things worse, the woman starts musing about how insects reproduce, which plants ideas in her companion's mind. Tempted, he tries to say his romantic line to her, but Kyle calls to urge his girlfriend to go to the party. The jock points out that she doesn't need to study since she's gorgeous and rich already. Offended, Brooke hangs up and starts crying, so Brad rushes to comfort her. She complains how her boyfriend is a jerk when all she wants is actual romance. Taking the chance, Brad tells her that if they were together, he would treat her like a goddess. Touched, Brooke asks him for a hug, and the man happily complies. The emotional woman then kisses him, much to Brad's surprise and delight. He confesses how he's dreamed of being with her, and his romantic words excite Brooke, so she pins him down and makes out with him. Before taking things further, however, Brooke asks if he has protection. Realizing that he doesn't, Brad promises to return before hurrying away. He speeds to a grocery store to buy what he needs, but a homeless man corners him and offers to wash his windows, with no choice. He allows the man before running across the store. When he finds what he needs, he realizes that he has left his wallet in the car, so he goes out to retrieve it, only to find that his father's vehicle has been stolen. This forces the desperate teen to file a police report, though Officer Austin notes that it's unlikely for them to retrieve the missing vehicle. After this, he goes to a payphone to call Brooke, but her number on his palm has been smudged. Meanwhile, Josh and Seth wonder how Brad is doing while Leah mulls over how she felt for her friend earlier. Just then, Brad calls them and asks Leah to pick him up. To make things easier, he promises to take a bus to meet her halfway back to their neighborhood. With that, Brad gets on a bus, but he spent his last change on the payphone. He asks the driver to let him off the hook, but the man is tired of getting stiffed out of a fare. As vengeance, the man drives recklessly to teach his only passenger a lesson. Brad holds on to dear life and sees Leah driving just beside the bus. However, she's busy ranting about how she's always ready to rescue her friend when he doesn't treat her well. Soon enough, the two vehicles drive in opposite directions, leaving Brad at the driver's mercy. Elsewhere, Brooke talks to her friend about how she's supposed to be studying. With Brad having not returned yet, she's convinced that the guy is playing hard to get. Unbeknownst to her, the man is abandoned in an empty parking lot. Lost, 
the man walks his way back, scared at all the noises he's hearing in the suspicious neighborhood. He retreats to a Spanish dance club to ask for a phone, but when he tries speaking the language, he ends up offending the men. Thankfully, the owner's sister takes an interest in him, and he ends up dancing with the woman instead. This also leads him to hold on for his life. To his luck, they just participated in a contest, and he wins $100. Brad then retreats to the bathroom and runs away. Coincidentally, he comes across his father's car, so he blocks the vehicle only to get hit. Still, he tells the gang driving the car that it's his father's. The men threaten him, yet Brad hesitantly tries to prove to them that the car belongs to his family. He slowly walks to the car to retrieve a keychain he left in the glove compartment, only to find several weapons stashed there. His keychain is amongst the items, so Brad holds it out to the gang, praying that they'll give him the car back. The leader, however, invites him for a joyride instead. Desperate for his life, Brad tries befriending them and learns that they did the graffiti at the back of his school's gym. However, when he mentions that the janitor washed it off, the gang gets pissed. Because of this, the gang drives up to his school to make new graffiti on the wall. They paint a lady who looks like Brooke and urges Brad to complete it. He complies hesitantly, but eventually finds it fun. However, the gang uses this chance to escape with his father's car and abandon the teen again. After everything he went through, Brad rants about how all he wanted was just a few minutes with Brooke. As if to answer his prayers, the moon shines directly at his classroom's window, reminding him about the item he discarded in the jar days ago. With this, he breaks into the school to retrieve it but struggles to open the jar. Instead, he breaks it to retrieve the item, unaware that the meditating janitor heard him. Thinking that he's one of the men who did the graffiti outside, the man uses a fire hose at him and chases him around the building. Brad desperately runs for his life, and eventually uses a bucket to subdue the man. He finally escapes, only to be spotted by the woman and her brother from the club earlier. As they chase them down, Leah talks to herself in her car, wondering if she can just tell Brad how she feels. Ultimately, she decides not to do this and ditch him, given that he's made her wait too long. To her surprise, Brad jumps in front of her car while he's running from the siblings. Quickly, he gets into her car and hurries her to drive. As soon as they're far enough, he asks her to drop him off at Brooke's house. He hints that he's so close to finally getting his dream girl, and Leah just shakes her head, pissed and heartbroken. She rants how ridiculous it is for her intellectual best friend to fall for a shallow cheerleader. But Brad refuses to discuss this with her. With that, she gives him the silent treatment and immediately drives off as soon as he exits in front of Brooke's house. Brad shrugs this off as he reverts his focus back to Brooke. However, the water sprinklers turn on, getting him soaking wet as he rings the woman's doorbell. No one answers the door, so the teen climbs the tree in front of her bedroom but drops the protection he needs. The item ends up down the drain, and the branch Brad is holding onto breaks. This leads to him crashing into Brooke's window. There, he finds that she left a note, claiming that she went to the party instead. Just then, the police arrive since a neighbor reported him for breaking and entering. Brad rushes to escape, but Brooke's dog bites his shoe off, leaving the item for Officer Austin to find later. After running for a while, the teen ends up at a parking lot where he spots his father's other car, leading him to realize that he stumbled upon the party his parents are attending. To his horror, Brooke's dog has followed him, so he gets on a golf cart to escape. Bev sees the commotion, so Ben calls the police on the party crasher, unaware that it's his son. This leads the police into the area, making Brad panic. Because of this, he swerves the golf cart and crashes straight into a dumpster. There, the homeless man from the grocery store finds him. Meanwhile, Leah has decided to go to the party to forget her frustrations about Brad. She dresses up nicely for the occasion, which surprises Josh and Seth, given that they've never seen her looking attractive before. Back in the street, the homeless man surprisingly helps Brad get a new set of clothes for the party. He thanks the man for helping him on his mission to be with his dream girl, but the homeless man points out that they have their eyes closed when they're dreaming. He advises the teen to keep his eyes open for the real world. Dismissing this, Brad pays the man $99 for the outfit then catches a bus to get to the party, only to chance upon the mad driver again. Thinking he won't pay again, the driver traps his arm between the doors and drags him across the road. Infuriated, Brad forces the door open and yells at the driver for nearly getting him killed. He asserts that he's endangered himself to earn money, so he angrily drops the coins into the bus dispenser. Almost instantly, the driver smiles and becomes nice. After getting off the bus, Brad goes to buy another box of protection, only to find that he's short on cash again. He begs the cashier to let him take the item, asserting that he's in love. Just then, the gang who took his dad's car arrives to rob the place. The police appear not long after, so the gang uses Brad as a hostage to escape. This begins a high-speed chase, and Brad tells his kidnappers to retreat to his schoolmate's party, hoping that this will reunite him with Brooke. 
Meanwhile, Leah is still struggling with her feelings despite being at the party, so she confronts Brooke. She tells her that Brad is a good person who's in love with her, so she advises the woman to treat him well. The cheerleader giggles at this, so Leah switches gears and threatens the woman and her friends if she hurts her friend. She then leaves the party while Kyle confronts Brooke, having heard the rumor that she slept with Brad. Coincidentally, the car chase passes by the party. However, a sniper blows up the gang's getaway car, leading to them crashing. With the gang caught, Brad is taken into the interrogation room, where he recounts what happened to him just because he tried to get together with Brooke. After all the trouble he went through, he decides that love is evil. Luckily, Officer Austin lets him off the hook, convinced that his story is real. He then shares that it took him hundreds of dates to find true love, so he questions if the teen is ready to give up after fighting so hard. Brad admits that he shouldn't quit yet, so the officer gives him the phone. To the teen's surprise, Officer Austin also throws him some protection, encouraging him to find his love. Soon, Brad cleans up and hitches a ride with Leah, who still can't help but come to his rescue again. He notices that she's all dressed up for the party, but she defends that she doesn't need to look nice to impress guys. However, she admits that perhaps if she did, he'd take the hint. Confused, Brad comments that he still doesn't understand her despite them being friends for years. Eventually they arrive at the party, and Brad hugs his friend to thank her. He then exits her car without hesitation, but Leah calls him back as if planning on confessing. Ultimately she backs out, and just wishes him luck. The disappointed Leah then moves to drive off, only to find a truck blocking her car. With no choice, she goes to the party to find its owner. Brad tries looking for Brooke, only to find the Spanish siblings crashing the party. He approaches Seth and Josh and begs them to distract the two while he leaves. Lucky for Brad, the Spanish woman sets her eyes on his friends instead, so the siblings take Seth and Josh away. Finally, Brad reunites with Brooke, who's still interested in finishing what they started. With this, Leah soon sees the two heading upstairs, breaking her heart further. The pair head to the bathroom for privacy, and Brad is convinced that Brooke is in love with him. However, she points out that she's still dating Kyle, much to his confusion. Brooke explains that she just wants to be physical with him, and this disappoints the guy. Finally, he realizes that the cheerleader doesn't really care about him. He wants his first experience to be with someone special who knows and accepts him for who he is. As he says this, only then does he understand what Leah has been hinting all along. With that, he searches for Leah downstairs, only to be blocked by Kyle, who thinks he's sleeping with his girlfriend. The man punches him, but Brad spots Leah's dog outside the door. Thinking quickly, Brad commands the dog to go after Kyle, thus letting him escape. He finally finds Leah outside, but she's pissed, thinking that he just got together with Brooke. He assures her that nothing happened because he finally discovered that he was looking for the wrong lady. This whole time, he should have kept his eyes open so he would have seen what was right in front of him. With that, he kisses Leah and feels that romantic spark he's been chasing all night. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.